Chapter 34 I found myself less and less homesick. Oakland and all her twists and turns began to make a strong impression on me. Her great port with its stark white container cranes and cats. The cathedral of light reflecting off Lake Merritt. Her long and wide boulevards tagged with street art. The Tribune Tower, its clock aglow in the night. The Fox and Paramount Theaters. Chinatown, her shoreline, hills and flats. Uptown, cemeteries, coffee houses, parks and schools. Her people, lots of energetic, friendly, creative, intelligent people. The green mountains of my youth were a distant memory and the distance only grew the more I realized my true nature. Getting back in touch with my step-parents was next to impossible in my mind. I knew they loved me, and I loved them too, but I had changed, come into my own. My life was no accident. I was by now aware of my origin, deluxe, of the light an ancient race of forgotten sentient beings, extraordinary humans with extrasensory consciousness. Those who came before me had fashioned our alchemy, my inheritance, by the development of subtle senses. We meant no harm toward humanity. Our intentions were pure. Yet we were outcasted as a result of practicing our faith in plain view persecuted with abandon and without reason in an age of ignorance, obliterated to the tune of good and evil, marked and judged and despised. Our affiliations were sought out and killed. Such was human nature. A steady shine of superhuman potential came from within us to carry the light, to polish and show the alchemy caused many of us to be cut down before our time. We only wanted to give the light to them, to share the light with them. But humans are creatures of comfort and likeness, and by nature resist a foreign element. We were victim to their bad reaction. We wished to bridge our differences and meet them in a place of high regard and mutuality. After all, we descended from a common ancestor our evolutionary paths had split, but they were terrified of us. A massacre was at hand. Our intelligentsia came together in Europe when they realized living in harmony with the general human population was no longer viable. Something had to be done, and quickly. They decided upon the migration of our people here to the great continent known as America within the larger exodus of peoples already taking place. Some of us remain behind by choice to die. Even in the new land, there was danger inherent in letting ourselves be seen. This was impressed upon me emphatically by the others and by my experience. Even if we could benefit the human race, human nature was to despise dissimilitude. I experienced it firsthand. Remember how they came to fear me? The other kids spotting me for something unique at first? My androgyny, my speed, the voices, something they could not quite ascertain or touch, somewhere we could not relate, which at first awakened respect and fascination, then turned to hatred, hatred and led to alienation. I unhinged the insipid fear in them and found myself strangely attracted to it. The very thing that might kill me also gave me life. The same process almost ended our kind centuries ago. Unless we took precaution and went underground and developed means to disarm them, we faced extinction. 
here in the new world, America, we would disenfranchise them of the fear only in the taking, then transforming the ever-abundant element. There was no other way to heal the divide.